my bond money. I went to Jesse H. Jones High School and I saw the demise of my school over the past 10 years. It was an orchestrated assault slash rape. They put these signs in our community around election time. Vote for a new Jones. Vote for a new Jones. You're right. They, they swear to God they, they swear to God they didn't do it, but they later admitted we did it. Vote for a new Jones. 2002, they removed, they raped the Vanguard program out of Jesse H. Jones. They continually took out all of our vital elements and uh, elements and programs within that school to make it attractive. 2002, the Vanguard program was gone. 04, the, uh, the IB program was gone. They said, hey, since we're taking this away, let's take away this wood shop, let's take away metal shop, and they broke it down to a bare bone school. Uh, within, the, within eight years, we had over four principals. We had a lot of teachers in there that had no solid foundation within the school. They just came in to teach. I think they were called Teach for America. If they taught for two or three years, they would get a portion of their loans uh, expunged. It's all of it. They'll get their loans expunged and then gone somewhere else. Now, the alumni, we came back by storm four or five times. We tried to bring in mentoring programs. I'm speaking from what I know from what we've done. So when I sit back and look at other schools and kind of see what they're going through, I could say, hey, we tried that. HISD didn't want you there. It was an ulterior motive. And this is, and this is what happened. So we brought mentorship programs back uh, to the schools. We tried to bring back gents, uh, LOS for, for the females and chess club and whatnot. But you had to have a teacher on campus that would um, be like the, the on-campus sponsor. None of the teachers wanted to do it. So if the teachers didn't want to step up to be the sponsors, those programs faded away. We had a principal there. All she wanted to do was just quietly retire. And that's exactly what she did. She wanted to quietly retire from the school. I often went by there and said, hey, why is this sign outside, um, our main marquee sign, why is it broken? Oh, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Well, how do you want people to come to a school when it looks like a prison on the outside? Make it attractive. Fix it up. You don't have money? We just passed a bond. Um, Jones, uh, Jones has allocated $1.12 million. To date, they have spent $1,500 to, uh, to um, fix the sign. And they spent another $104,000 for a gym floor. So basically you say, well, hey, Jones is not Jones anymore. They closed the tax ID of Jesse H. Jones down, and now it's called Jones Futures Academy, which is a hospice, which is a hospice program in so many words. It's a, it's a failing program. So they put, these, they put these programs in our schools. Cashmere has it, uh, I want to say Fur has it. And per the TEA standards, out of the, seven, out of the seven schools that were Futures Academy, only two of the schools were passing per TEA standards. So why would you put a failing program into a school that needs help already? But let's go back. We're talking about bond money. And all these answers come from the Open Information Act because that's the way I send my information to, uh, to the school just to make sure they're giving us the correct information on paper. So roughly, they spent about $100,000. So where's the other $1 million at? But Jones isn't Jones anymore. Right now, we're hosting a hotel for Milby. So if you ain't got to send the money, we got to come down to St. John. Where's the, where's the money at? So I want, to, I want to do some more research on this surplus program, because what I found very interesting was Bel Air, they, uh, HISD tried to give Bel Air $100 million for a school. Let me say that again. $100 million for a school that they did not ask for. They didn't ask for it. Here it is, we're asking for money for programs in our schools because they need it, and we can't get it. We have to sing and dance for it, and we still don't get it. Now, something's wrong with that. But I go back, and I, I look at Yates, and I look at Jones. It's a wonderful case study. We had principals, four principals. We had no continual, we had no continual leadership. We had teachers that were inexperienced, no ties to the community. We had fights. We had alumni trying to come back. They divided us, or they tried to divide us as alumnus, and to a certain degree, it worked. 
and I'd be like, God damn, here we go all over again. All, all over again. Jones is on a hospice program. Remember, they lied to us. They lied to us dead in our face. Time after time after time again. I say, where are our officials? We're gonna stop, we stop looking at officials. We stop caring about what the pastors say because a lot of these pastors, they're getting money under the table with their 501c3s from HISD. So naturally, they're not gonna go against HISD. And I, we can say this for a certainty. When it's time to speak, you know, we'll talk to some pastors, oh yeah, we're gonna be there, yeah, we're gonna, we sign up, we speak, we look on the list, what? where are they at? Nowhere to be found. So they raped Jones, they took out all the good programs, they stripped all the good teachers. So somebody had a quote, nobody goes shopping at an empty grocery store. They made Jones unattractive on purpose. 